All right, we'll do the air brake and in cabin inspection for a Class B bus. Make what sure are you doing weighs oh. one and 26,000 and one pounds. First, you're gonna chuck off the wheel. I'm chucking the wheel from behind since the bus is uphill. It goes downhill, I'll chuck it in the front so when I put the bus in neutral, it won't roll away. So it comes on. First thing we do, we can fan down our air tank because before anything we have to fill up our air tank. So we have to bring it down to fill it up because you can't fill something up that's full. So I bring it down to like 65, 70, anywhere if you're below 9, it's okay. Seatbelt's not cut, it's not frayed, it's in good condition, it properly latches, and secure. It's properly mounted. Now, the one before is called a safe start. Put the key in the open position. What the safe start does, it gets tagged. So the glow plugs to warm up and the gauges to adjust. If this is a regular bus and it had ABS, then it'll get time for the ABS light to read and shut off or whatnot. But if air brakes are going to the same thing. Then you get five seconds and you cut off the bus. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, the bus is on and my oil pressure gauge is at 40. And it's a normal operating range for this vehicle. To begin the test, make sure the bus is in neutral. Make sure your power key brake is uh, off as they fill up the tanks. So you can step on the accelerator if the examiner permits it, and fill up, and fill up the air tanks. The cover will cut off, will cut off and we'll hear a burst of air. That's telling us that the cover has cut off and the air tanks are full. Which we should be hearing soon. You hear it right there? And that's the cover that has cut off. You tell the examiner the air tank, the cover has cut off and the air tanks are full. And the air pressure is normal between 90 and 120 psi. Yeah. Um, Reverse brake, you will you'll get an initial drop of air when you let the brakes out, but it shouldn't go anywhere in that. Then, to perform the call the static air leak test, you have to turn off the bus completely. Wait a moment, wait for the gauges to go down, and then open the key in the open position. Then you wait a couple of seconds, so the gauges start calibrating again. From there, start the static air leak test with a timer for one minute. So you tell them I'm going to do the static air leak test for one minute, click the timer, begin. Now you wait for one minute to pass. Once the minute has passed, you show the examiner the timer that has been a minute. And then you can stop it and then tell them the bus has not lost more than two PSI in one minute. You see it has it. It hasn't even moved. But if it was to lose, you're only allowed two, two PSI in that one minute to start carry. Now for the air pressure loss test, you tell them you're going to perform the air pressure loss test, you have to hold the brake pedal down and have the timer. When you step on the brake, you start the timer at the same exact time you tell them. We'll do the air pressure loss test beginning now. 
should start the timer. Wait for a whole minute. After the minute's done, you show them the timer. You stop it, you can let go of the pedal. And then you tell them the bus has not lost any more than three PSI. If you see, you tell them that it hasn't gone down any. But you're allowed to lose up to three in that one minute by stepping on it. Then after that, it comes the, you do the red light warning and alarm test. So when the vehicle is at 60 pounds or less between the, um, the red light warning and alarm cuts on. It's a light and a buzzer. So you gotta step on the brakes and turn it down so it cuts on. You see, around 60, it, it hit cut on and you hear the buzzer. That's for the red light warning and alarm. So then you know your air pressure is low. From there, we're going to do what's called the pop-out brake test. That's for your emergency brake, the spring brake. So when you have low air, it pops, the brake's automatically locked, so the vehicle won't move. So you do that by pumping the brakes until I'll begin the pop-out brake test now. Go to you see it pop out. It popped out around 30. And that's normal, it's supposed to pop out between 7 and 35 PSI. From here, now you fill up the air tanks. And you do a safe start. So you wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You fill up the air tanks. If it tells you to accelerate, normally when you fill up the air tanks, you'll be doing your in-cabin inspection. So I'm going to accelerate a little to at least get 60, so for the video, you won't hear the buzzer, you can hear what we're saying about the in-camera So now we're going to be the in camera inspection. I start from top to bottom and across. At the top, we have our bodily fluids kit and first aid kit. Properly bound and secure. In the state of New Jersey, is no longer a requirement by the state when the vehicle is inspected, but for the road test purposes, they require you to have it. We have our student mirror, properly mounted and secure. It's not cracked. Condition and it's you know it's set properly so I can see all the students in the bus. Sun visors, power visors, secure in case it gets sunny and you know block the sun on my vision. Up to the windshields, both sides, left to right. Clean that crack, good condition, no obstructions. Glasses and clean that crack condition. Uh, window, driver window, opens and closes freely. Side, both pieces. They not crack the condition. My side rear view mirrors and the front of my crossover mirrors, blind spot mirrors. All of them are properly mounted, secure, properly adjusted. The brackets are in good condition. The mounts are properly you know, mounted. There I come. I have my wipers. I'm working properly. The rubber, the blade is not missing any rubber. The brackets are intact. Then we're going to wash the floor. It's working normal, dispersing adequately. Then from here, we did that. We have my um, inspection sticker, which is up to date. My paperwork, which is up to date. The fuses were out just now with high air, six fuses in good condition, working properly. Then, I'll come over here and I have my master I have my seatbelt cutter. In case of an emergency and the seatbelt locks, with the seatbelt cutter we can cut the seatbelt off a student or the driver. Over here on my master tool, I have my fuse panel. I have my rear heaters in the back to keep the children warm in the back. My fan left and right, working properly, properly mounted in the summertime. My heaters, these are in the middle, left and right. 
of the frost left and right. I can feel the heat, it's producing heat and it's working properly. Then over here, I have my warning light master. I have my interior lights that you see the interiors are on. My warning lights, if I step on the, on the button, I can see in my, in my light monitor, which I forgot to mention, my light monitor, you can see the warning lights are on, and you can see them also in the cross over this blind spot there. If I open the switch, the, the handle, the door, my stop sign and my cross arm will open, and the red, light, and sure. red warning lights open. So I open the door, stop arm, you can see them through the crossover. There is also the, the crossing arm, opens and closes fully. And then I can turn them off right here or close the door for them to, you know. From there, across this way, I have my steering wheel, no more than two inches of play, city horn. Working properly. I have my left indicator working normal. Up right indicator working normal. Four way hazards indicator are working normal. Marker lights, if you look, you can see them working normal. Headlights working normal. High beam indicator is working normal. That take care, takes care of the lights. From here, I'll come over to my gauges. Amp gauge. The amp gauge reads zero, and that's the normal operating range for this uh, vehicle. Turn your wipers off. Stuck. Yeah, they get stuck sometimes. <laughs> Let's get on the video. Go on to our volt, uh, volt gauge. The volt gauge is reading 14, and that's no with a normal operating range for this vehicle. A temperature gauge is reading 170 and that's within normal operating range for this vehicle. In case if they do ask, then what the what it does, it tells you the temperature of your coolant. The volt gauge tells you the voltage the alternator sends to your battery. The oil pressure gauge is reading uh, 40 and that's a normal operating range for this vehicle and that tells you the pressure of the oil inside the engine. Your RPM gauge is right now reading 700 and that tells you the revolutions per minute on the motor. Speedometer gauge in good condition, tells you the miles per hour while, while, while you're driving. My gas gauge is a little, a little over half a tank and it tells me how much fuel I have. My transfer gauge tells me the temperature of the transmission fluid and it's reading, I think it's around 140, and that's normal for, uh, within normal operating range for this vehicle. My air tank gauge is working normal, it's full, and it's reading 120 pounds. Right here, I have my uh, the cruise control, because I need it to set it, if it was necessary. My RPM gauge, my RPM control, for warming up, I can set the various settings on the RPM. Listen, this is the uh, handle light dim switch. It's working normal. My emergency brake, which is secure. My shifter, which is working normal. My brake pedal, which doesn't stick and is rubberized. Gas pedal, which just doesn't stick and is working normal. My Open service door opens and closes freely. If you see a step light, it's clean, not cracked, color clear. The steps are in good condition and secure. My handrails are secure and not missing. Uh, over here for, my, for the rest of my safety equipment, my ABC fire extinguisher, properly mounted, secure, fully charged, up to date with locking. I have three triangles and three flares with extra fuses, properly mounted and secure.
from there. Let me see. I mentioned, in case you forget, pretty much just everything. At the end, I will mention uh, my seat, or at the beginning, my little seatbelt, that the cushion is, is, is the cushion is secured to the seat. The seat is secured to the frame. The frame is in good condition. Now from here, I'll do the rest of the carry's mentioned, so I'll take off my seatbelt. I went to the hallway, which is clean and free of debris. I mentioned the seats are secure. The, uh, the windows are clean, not cracked, good condition. The seatbelts are none missing, not cut, not frayed, in good condition. Cushions are good, secure to the seat, seat secure to the frame. The frames are in good condition, and so on. By this point, I'll tell you um, to move, move on. You're good with the seat portion. Come to the only if the examiner tells you to. Come to your first emergency exit. You mention it's properly labeled. Then you open the emergency exit. The buzzer sounds. It opens and closes freely from the inside and only the inside. And it's secure. Then you come on to your other emergency exit and mention the same thing that it's properly labeled. The door opens, the buzzer sounds. Closes freely from the inside and secure. Then keep walking down the aisle until you get to the end. And you can see the lens in clean, not cracked condition, color red. Rear emergency door is properly labeled. All the windows are clean, not cracked, not broken in condition. The handle, both are sounds. The door opens fully. You have to fully open the door. Make sure it locks and everything locks. Unlock it. Close it. And the handle secured. Then you come forward. Some of these have fans, but this is not fan. You come to your emergency hatch, top hatch. So it's the exit, push. Those are sounds. Always a close the screen from the inside. And then you close. Come up to the front, and then we will mention the same about this hatch. If you like me to do it, that's a yes or no, most likely it'll be no. Then you come back up to the front. So now, seat belt back on, like customary. Make sure it's attached. Then you will do what is called your emergency brake test or parking brake test. It's already on because, you know, it popped out. So, double check. Put it in drive, let go of the brake, feel that the bus holds, the brake holds the bus, and it's not moving, I accelerate, and the brake is holding the bus, and the bus is not moving, so the parking brake is working normal. I'll come here, I'll test my service brake, I will Disengage the parking brake, plus in here, then go to the service brake, go forward. This is four or five feet. Stop. It was south normal. It's in good working condition. Put it neutral. Service brake works. Push the brake. You turn off the bus, take the key, and you move on to the outside. And that concludes our portion of the air brake and in-cabin inspections with commercials.